Welcome back to the Flea Control Secrets video series. I'm Diana Guerrero, also known as the Arc Lady. And have you missed me? I haven't done a video for you in a while, mainly because it hasn't been flea season. Even though in some parts of the world, flea season goes year-round. Where I live, it's in the mountains where there's snow and high altitude and really dry. And we actually don't have fleas here. But... The big news for pet owners who live in areas that are plagued by fleas is the EPA flea treatment study news. Finally, after waiting almost a year, they have released the report. So I wanted to call your attention to the fact that I have a lot of information that I put up on this on the flea treatment news blog. And that's at fleacontrolsecrets.com forward slash flea treatment in case you haven't visited. So I'm just going to go through this as quickly as possible, just so you have an idea of what's going on. The main thing I want to call your attention to are a few little items. Number one, the EPA actually did an online webinar on this topic back in March. So I want you to go over to the blog and make sure you listen to that if you have a pet. It's pretty important. The other thing is, get over and... Um, Voice your concerns and opinions now. They said they're going to investigate more because that's what's needed. Well, they've been investigating for a while, and I would think they'd have a little bit more on the ball after over a year. So that's just my personal opinion, but there you go. Anyway, so they found some reactions, which you can read about, but... The first thing that disturbed me about this whole thing was back when they it first started, which prompted me to write the Fleet Control Secrets ebook, uh, they removed some things from the EPA website. And I thought that was really bad behavior because as a consumer, I want to know what they're looking at right away. Um, in addition, they looked at reported incidences and at both active and inner ingredients, but because those inner ingredients, those are the ones that aren't listed, they're considered proprietary, um, I'm kind of concerned that they didn't reveal what those were. So those are a couple things. And also, let's see, um, they found some trends, so I'll let you read more about it, but basically the points I wanted to hit are here. That small breed dogs were affected more than medium and large breed dogs. Dogs were affected over three years of age were significant, meaning more dogs over three years of age uh, were reported, and I think that's just because people start using flea treatment at later ages. Younger cats affected were significant. Certain products with specific ingredients were they stood out in the numbers and then the dosage ranges they thought were too broad and that might be contributing to some of the reactions so the thing that bugged me was they were saying that it was the consumer that was doing stupid things that caused the problems okay um, obviously that's going to be some of it but just to say the consumers are responsible is just really ludicrous okay so unrevealed information the inner ingredients that could be a very important factor in some of the adverse reactions um, you can actually go follow this link and take a look at the products and manufacturers that had reactions online at the EPA website. The thing that was interesting about this whole thing was they actually looked at the percentages because they didn't want to bias any particular product based on the volume of sales. So, you know, they thought that the product popularity would make a big difference. And then the other thing uh, is that they um, were pretty vague on, you know, what they're actually going to do. So 
that's where we're at right now, hoping to see some, some better reports for them in the near future. I want to give you some flea treatment safety steps you can take. And if you're interested in this topic, I want you to go by the blog and follow me on Twitter or Facebook. On Twitter, it's Flea Control Book. And on Facebook, I have both a group and a fan page. But if you want to keep up on this item, you can go there or subscribe to the blog via RSS or even sign up for the, flea, the free flea e-course. Okay, so safety tips you can take. Um, one, make sure you consult your veterinarian before you use any flea product. And don't purchase cheap flea treatment products. It's just not worth the life of your pet. You can uh, read uh, one of my blog posts on counterfeit flea treatments. That's an important consideration. And online, be really super careful. There's a lot of suspect uh, suppliers, people who aren't true suppliers and are bringing in products that aren't actually from the manufacturers that they say they're from. Make sure you read the manufacturer's in instructions. And that means follow the directions and read the entire label. Pay attention to the warnings and use caution when you're using them on weak, elderly, sick, pregnant, or nursing pets, and also young pets. Follow age restrictions. That's a big one. The big other thing that you want to do is weigh your pet before application and always err on the lower side. You don't want to overdose your pet. Follow species-specific practices. That means only dog products on dogs and cat products on cats. Keep the package and record the dates and times you treat your pet. The big thing here is that you want to make sure that you have the lot numbers and product data in case your pet has an adverse reaction. It's very important for tracking. You can use the flea treatment product on a pet when you're going to be present. And I encourage you to do so like on a day off so you can watch your animal in case there is a reaction. And then if you have a reaction, call your vet immediately or call an emergency clinic. I also included the Animal Poison Control Center, a link and the number to them. Now here I've listed um, some hot links to the EPA. The most important ones I want you to, to really pay attention to is to listen to the EPA flea treatment investigation webinar. Then take a look at the flea product reaction list. And then also, you can actually go and report any adverse reactions. This is for vets and consumers. Somebody incorrectly said it's only for vets. No, you can click in, and uh, they have a consumer page as well. So the thing that I want you to do is, after you've checked those things out, I want you to leave a public comment on flea treatment products to the EPA. This concerns your pets. Um, they did include a specific email address, pets at epa.gov. I've had no luck getting the EPA to respond to me. So um, I would say go ahead and do the public comments. And if you want to send uh, an email and try it, they now have this dedicated email. And here's the contact people that you'll want to um, send your comments to. OK, so finally, um, I hope you'll join me on Twitter and Facebook. But also, um, I want to tell you that you have permission to reprint this article, post it on your blog, send it to your pet-related list, as long as you do it complete in, in, entire, in its entirety with all the links. And credit and a link back to my blog would be appreciated. So that's it for now. Hope that you and your pet are doing well. Flea season is fast approaching. So I hope you can be flea free this year. And drop me a line with any comments. Uh, best place to reach me is on the Facebook fan page or through Twitter. Thanks again.